Okay, so part two. It is, um, what is it? Oh, it's 617 by now. 2019, probably around like 1 a.m. Um, I just got off of this labor job they got me on. Um, it's like 2 p.m. to 10 p. 10.30 p.m. So I've been uh, doing this five days a week, just for a couple weeks and stuff. I've been dealing with this money issue. Basically, I'm stuck in this place where uh, they're giving me these these jobs that they can, um, you know, harass me in. I don't know how it's legal, but I don't know. I guess it's legal. I don't know. But uh, so I figure it's, it's legal. I figure these people must be working for for um, government or law enforcement. But they're doing some fucking illegal shit, like like the harassment and stuff like that they're going at is like hell of fucking, I can't believe it's legal. Like, I doubt that, I can't hire a lawyer. They got me in under their thumb because financially I'm fucked. And, and everyone around me has been fucked as well. So all my loved ones and friends and stuff are, I've been alienated from and, and put into this place. And I guess they got me to a place where they they must have enough charges on me or whatever to to put me on house arrest, right? Like they got on Ant-Man, he's on house arrest. But these motherfuckers are not going to let me go and shit because it's not really about any of that shit. It's more about who I am as a activist, fucking free thinker you know that's they're worried that I'm gonna you know cause a revolution but you know that's not really what I'm here to do and they know it now they know it they know it. I'm not racist as much as uh, I am pro-union and uh, that's something that they're trying to break down is a union you know so you know what do you call it there's words for this in government language and lingo there's like antagonizer and all these there's words you know like Tupac and stuff like they got words for us and stuff and I'm an artist that's really what it is I'm an artist that fits into that I have enough charisma that people but the thing is and they know people must know this they're not stupid but they must know that I'm working for them too. Like I'm working for people that want to make the world better. Like, like the only difference is that social media has changed stuff. They put they they were able to have normal people talk to other people and put their thoughts out in the world. Like instead of controlling it through TV and and stuff. But, and so that's what they're really scared of. They're scared of normal people talking to each other and being able to become so they, so they can't control their their Brad Pitts and stuff because like Instagram there's all kinds of hot chicks on Instagram and like people that are talking motivators motivational speakers and all this stuff on YouTube like there's so many important interesting people that you don't need to go to Hollywood no more to like care about who's what they're doing because normal people are more interesting and uh, and that's that's something that they were tr they've been trying to stop and trying to they, but they can't because it is more interesting or it's more real you know like in a world of fake like we wish that was real so I don't know what's gonna happen because because the law is the law and the rich are the rich and the people, you know, poor, you know, drug dealers are drug dealers. I don't know who's who. I don't really care. And that's the thing is like I have to work for rich people because they're the ones that have stuff to do cool shit. I have to like be around the people that are doing cool shit. Like I'm not, I don't want to, you know, like this is what I'm good at. I'm good at creating art. Who's going to buy a painting, you know? So anyway, so I don't know what's going to happen, but 
basically like I'm not against people I'm for the good whatever wherever that goes I'm just doing whatever I feel is important to, to better my life but more importantly to to help out and the powers there's people that are not really about that you know what I mean they're the opposite there's always opposites like Superman and Lex Luthor there's always gonna be some Lex Luthers out there and I and they got me, you know, they got me pretty good already, so we'll see if I can get out of this, because um, a lot of people are not going to want me to get out, because if I get out, it's going to sh show who they are, and a lot of people are not going to want that. But s for anybody that's watching this or cares, just keep an eye out for these people, because if, whether people that I haven't met yet or people that I've met already... Like this is real. This is some real stuff. Like some um, some um, Bob Marley, uh, um, Lauren Hill stuff. You know, like love the black people because they got well, they got they were able to to they, some of them got destroyed or and while trying to get their freedom and trying to get their words out, but they were able to articulate and. And try, you know what I mean? Like, what else can you do but try? And for the white folks, it's like, dude, yeah, you know what? JFK got killed. John Lennon got killed, dude. Like, it's not about race. What it is, and for the George Bushes and the, the freaking CIA people and the cops and the authorities, FBI, all this stuff. I got a cousin that's freaking, she's, I don't know what she is. She's like um, some district attorney in L.A. or something. Or in, in, San Jose or something you know what I mean I, I wish everyone the best I would hope they get I hope they get the best in life because we all deserve it but I don't know what these their agendas are from president to district attorneys to to local drug dealers to to people that feel that I have wronged them if you really felt that I wronged you, or you like, I don't, I don't understand how you can have not just talked to me about it when it happened or when you know what I mean. Like, and if you're fighting, if you think that you're fighting for somebody else's story that you think that is part of your thing, basically you're like, oh well, you know, women power. Or Dude, like your guys are fighting for something that you don't know firsthand information about, and now I have to do this because you're not talking to me. Nobody's talking to me personally. You know what I mean? And you got my family involved, and you, 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 you hurt my family, maybe unintentionally, but you did. And I don't know who's hurt, who's hurt who, or but fucking. I'm not involved in all that. I have not yet tried to destroy anybody. And I don't want to. But I have to speak the truth. And I'm trying to do it in the best way I can. So I'm trying to tell the, the scenario and story in a way that is clear and precise and not emotional but I can't I can't I can't I've tried and, I, and like uh, to really tell the story I have to tell the story and to even think about writing some of this stuff down and it's like who do I give it to like you want to put it on the internet like this is not what I want to do but I don't like it's been put on the internet already like people already put this out and, and people believe it and I've been having to deal with this for the last five to seven years even longer, like, fucking, there's some shit that I have to think about since when I was 18, you know what I'm saying, like, there was some weird shit that happened in 18 that I'm, like, starting to think, like, whoa, was that, like, part of the setup, like, what was that, so this is question my whole life, you know what I mean, and my relationships, and my family, my son, like, you know what I mean, like, there's some weird shit happening, but now I'm here, 
now I'm here. Like I made all these blogs and all this writing and finished. They try to destroy my art. And so I have to finish it up and put it out into the world the way it should be. I guess they put my YouTube stuff. They got all my video tape, my D mini DVs. They got a hold of that, and they must and they edited it to they fit their advantage. And they wanted me to shut up. Like these people that own companies and shit wanted me to shut up because they didn't want the truth out. On my life, it's not about the truth out on everybody in the whole world. Like this is shit that they put try to make me a real bad guy so that they're good guys and they can't be the bad guys if because if i'm not if i'm not guilty of what they've tried to do char if i'm not what they want and if they try to make me out to be then that means that they're liars and they're bad people and they don't want that and that's what's gonna happen you know that's what's happening already you know what i mean like this is all secondhand information that's kind of getting to me in different ways um which i gotta you know thank the fucking media but it's not that i even want this shit out there like that you know what i mean this is fucked up shit i don't know why they think i'm scared to talk about this stuff i'm not so you know i don't know who they thought i was or who they thought i don't know who the thing is i've listened to a lot of artists and their music and stuff and they talk about this stuff they talk about getting pictures took in and, and getting set up and blackmailed by their producers and the people that own shit so that they're like bad and like seeing these sexual harassment stuff and all this going through their past. Like Lauren Hill had to go through her past and, you know, and that shit's humiliating. You know what I mean? Like having to write about your whole fucking sexual life and talk about fucking all this family drama it's just so that, you know, like, and then. Like Wyclef Jones friggin' he wrote a book and then he starts talking about shit about her. Like and because they were intimate and they you know, talking about her stuff and putting her life out there. You know what I mean? So now you have to worry about your fucking people that you love and care about and people that you had kids with stuff like trying to take you down, like trying to, you know, throw your life in there. So that's what happened to me. So I see this stuff in other people's lives and I'm like, Fuck, that shit happened to me too. Like so I'm not the only artist, creator, person, that activist that's ever put this, that ever had this happen to them. So, and I knew that was going to happen because I've studied this stuff since I was a kid. And I knew if I ever made it, I was going to have to, like, deal with having to deal with, you know, this money stuff and fandom stuff and and being attacked you know stolen from and all. but I didn't I'm not I'm not and some of these artists are not never got rich either but at least they had their albums and music cemented in time so my stuff is not cemented in time because they didn't want to put it out there yet but they made movies and stuff off of it anyway but my name's not on it so I'm hoping through time my name's going to be put on there just like Jack Kirby and say hey you know what like they took it from this guy he stole this guy's original story make a Wikipedia about it that you know what I'm saying you know, because it's fair it's only fair that the independent artist gets their say and their name and written and written in time because if it's if that's where it came from, then it has to become. That we're in a new age and stuff. That stuff can happen, you know. And so I expect. That's what I expect from, from the, truth, seekers, in the world. So that, people get used to it. So they can get used to it, that people can't just steal people's shit, and and not have their name tarnished. Like Stanley got his name tarnished. You know what I mean? Like for the rest of his life, he had to fucking hear people talk about Jack Kirby and why did you do that to Jack Kirby why did you do that to Steve Ditko like and he didn't like it but he shouldn't have stole from everybody love Stanley great guy I met him once he was a fucking nice old man who fucking very courteous and he he did create those characters 
but legally he didn't want to share the money and to take all his stuff taken away so he could never say that what really those guys contributed and how much they they were the creators of the characters and so what needs to happen is that these people that took my shit and stole my and used my my um, submission to Image Comics, my big giant book of of all my characters and 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 uh, storylines, and they used what they read and saw, and then they created movies and stuff off of it. Just because it's like, or even my life story, like even just because it's like. Um, some kind of homage or something like on pop culture or whatever's happened social media whatever they put out into the world on me like needs to have needs to cement it in time so that when somebody else that comes out like me puts their stuff out there and gets it stolen and, and used and like people are held accountable and, and so it doesn't happen. So it doesn't happen. People would get scared to be able to do that. You know what I mean? Like, because it's not fair. It's not fair to the to the little guys. You know what I mean? The guys that are coming up into the world. It's gonna change a lot of the way business is created. It's already changed. Social media. You can call people out and whatever. You know what I mean? There's new laws that need to have have to happen that haven't happened yet. But Copyright laws need to be fixed too, and uh, the way lawyers are used and stuff like this need to, needs to be fixed. Like, it shouldn't be how much money you have. It shouldn't be an issue with lawyers. That has to happen. That has to happen. Just like certain things in government, but one of them is just like the quality of your lawyer shouldn't be the how much money you have has to happen um, we've known it for a long time but it has to happen it has to happen no justice will ever be real until it happens no justice and that's where I'm living in is there's no justice I don't got justice you know they want me to they want to put me out there and like be all hush hush about it everything but the, but I'm not cool with it I'd rather die than to people believe this stuff you can humiliate me and all you want you can you know do all the things that you did but I hope that it doesn't happen to anybody else because it's not right it's not right nobody's gonna be able to speak the truth anymore nobody's gonna be able to challenge uh, the powers that be Nobody's going to make the world... The cops can't do it by themselves. The cops and the authorities can't change society. You know what I mean? Like, they can't make society better through fear. You can't. You need the artists. You need the artists and the, and the healers and the people that... The social activists. Not the crazy ones. You don't... There's a lot of people... There's out of 100 or 10,000 of them... 10,000 artists, there's only like 50 real ones. So the same thing with the activists, you know, there's a bunch of them, but really like, there's some good ones out there. There's some good ones that deserve to be heard. Like, just like the media, we need the media. The real media. You know, we don't need to have them talk about government stuff, but we do need them to talk about, like, to challenge us, the people around us, you know, like real ones not fake things dude like action news like half that shit's fake oh my god I can't believe it sometimes I feel like throwing up like you want good you want a good world but you guys all you guys are like living this fake little world you guys are making it worse you guys ain't making it better it's getting worse and this is fake stuff is not gonna help fake stuff lies is not gonna help. Like maybe you guys got your agenda plans and you got systems that are like okay, this is how you do it. 
It's only going to eventually, like, crumble if it doesn't have a foundation. And the foundation has to be, like, that we believe that there's justice. That we believe, not just that there is justice, that there actually, not just justice, but reprimands for 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 wrongdoings and like I said I don't mind dealing with this that people people make laws and then they want me to to they want to go around the laws to attack me and destroy me I didn't make up these laws I don't know what the fuck happened you know what I mean like and then now everything's all piled up like fucking sky high. And now you want me to deal with it without a lawyer, without all this shit? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what the hell happened, man? Like, where's the justice in that? Like, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, so anyway, so this is, I'm going to start it off. And this is stuff I already mentioned. I have to write some of this stuff on paper, but. So the first video that I just made, the one I just made says what I wanted to say in the overall sense. I'm not taking anybody's issues. I don't know what happened and if I don't know what happened, I'm not that has nothing to do with me. I don't know if I don't care if I know these people forever. I don't know why they did what they did or who what happened and but my guess is that they got set up. So this is since this stuff happened since I was kid, like 18, like I noticed some of this stuff happened. Like, I'll get into that in a second, but like, basically, this is how the people do it. Like, how the how the enforce law enforcement uses breaks down gangs or breaks down uh, groups of people. Or breaks down if they want somebody. They use everyone else around them to get them. You know what I mean? Like, they'll get... They'll put... This is why I'm dangerous to the... To the powers that be. And other activists, too. I'm not the only one. But, like, people of color have been getting educated. And we... And, you know, I was, I've been educated for a while already. So, like... And I've been pretty much... Man, my face is all fucked up, dude. Um... I've been, um, challenging some of these things that I know about and learned and, and not just brown people or whatever. There's a lot of us, you know, different colors that I've tried to include everyone at the same time to, so that there's a discussion in the art shows. So it's not just about one color, but I did represent what I know in my culture and one of it is you know one of the things that is an issue is institu institutionalization and the people that I my family that I grew up with and how in these communities they the authorities um, control these people through drugs and through distribution of, of poverty joblessness, alcoholism. They put it around, like, black communities, they'll put liquor stores instead of grocery stores, you know, and then high poverty levels and stuff. So this is all known stuff. This is educational stuff. So it's not a coincidence that these people, communities of color have high institu institu institutionalization rates. It's because white folks are scared of them. You know, they don't want these black and brown people to to, to take revenge on them, you know, whatever, you know, like the slaves, these ex-slaves, they, they don't want them to have too much stuff because then they might have guns and then they might be, they might start the Black Panther movement again or start the, you know, and this, it's history, it's historical stuff. Like through the slave days, through them, segregation, through them having their own uh, economy and then you know this is history and this is what I've learned through social studies through social um, um, social uh, what is it called uh, anyway 
This is what I, I learned um, through reading these books and learning about these people, and uh, and it's and it's well known through both communities. Any any educated community, our people know these things, and there's a lot of frustration through the colleges and through activism and stuff because it's known, but nothing's changing. Or you know things are changing, but it's slow and fought for and people are dying for it and all this stuff. So, you know, there's agendas of people, everybody, there's other agendas. So anyway, so like, um, so what happened is in my life, for some reason, some of these people around me were like getting taken out. Like, I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know why, I don't know but my closest friends and stuff and my closest family all started getting attacked. And um, like, a, for instance, this is the first one that I even realized what was going on, or realized, or was aware of, that it was pretty high level. And this was something that I saw on the news. And, you know, it's not that I want to talk about all these people that don't, but this is stuff that happened and I don't know if they're being, they were used against me or if they were, you know what I mean, getting deals so that they'd be like, hey, you know, uh, what do you know about this dude or what can you tell us about this guy or hey, go, go be buddy buddies and get him to say this and that, um, or whatever, I don't know, but one guy that people keep br brought up to me and keep bringing up to me and I don't know what they really think. But, you know, Don, my friend Don Cheatham, right? I don't know if he's my friend anymore. I don't know what happened during the time. I, brought, I already talked about this already. But this was, like, pretty big news. And this is, like, I don't know if it's fake. I don't know what happened. But, um, you know, I'm in Oroville, and this is something there. All these other people know him because I guess he became, like, a big shot around town um, in the marijuana world. And... Um, I don't know, you know, I mean, like last time I saw him, he brought me into this world. So I didn't, it's not that I'm talking about him because I want to talk about him. It's because he talked to me in around 2014, 2015, 2014, 2013, 2014. I was working at B College and this whole sewer stuff. I'm going to write all this stuff on paper, but this is stuff like overall overview. Um, so the dude calls me at Sarah's um, Sullivan, her name's Sullivan, Burtonshaw, I don't know what the hell her last name is anymore, but her last name, real last name is Burtonshaw, the girl that I had raised Isaiah with. Um, and so they're dealing with stuff, and I'm there, and then so this dude calls me. I see the dude on the news, she shows me on the news, and that's what, now that I think about all this stuff, I'm like, fuck, dude, th was that fake? Like, now I know that I know that like, the news will do fake sh stories just to do whatever their agenda is. I'm like, oh, fuck, dude, that, did he just do that to, is it made up? So I don't know. But basically what was on the news is that he, he got busted, right, for, or, like they were worried, thinking he he went to the mountains in Berry Creek, and and uh, a guy went missing. The guy had his car parked at the guy's house. This redheaded guy, and uh, they were going to buy some property. And and Don was his, the girlfriend called and was like, "Where's my boyfriend?" And so the two and two didn't add together. And I guess Don was like, "I don't know." And then put all the stuff in. This is all stuff I read in the news. Um, and on my phone, like I read on my phone, I saw on the news, and it, these are like two articles and like a TV thing on the news. Action news, good old action news, those fuckers, dude. I wish they were the cool guys, I don't know, maybe somewhere, somehow, some of them are cool, but most of them are fuckheads because I see what they put out there, and it's like, it's fucking, they have me in their, they had, I don't know who fucking running that shit or who's putting that shit out there, but for the last like year and a half since I've been here 
I've been watching that shit. And those motherfuckers, like, I'm like, oh, you little bitches. So that's how I feel about them. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take that. Um, I'm not going to change my mind to, on that till, till somebody shows me something different. But for the most part, I'm just like, they're just part of the racist town that I see. I don't know, maybe, maybe somewhere somebody's good in good old Butte County, but as far as I see, these guys are fucking assholes. Anyways, fucking, not gonna win me any brownie points from anybody, but these guys piss me off a lot. Anyway, so this is shit that I see on the news, right? So I'm like, and me and him had a falling out already, like, I don't know, and now that I think about it, like, I'm like, oh, the motherfucker, like, I don't know if he was involved or if he, like, was part of it or what the hell, like, but that guy, before he made all his money and shit, before he was a weed guy, because he created a store, him is, is, and I knew, I met, you know, I was, and I hung out with him when I was 18 in Montana, and his, he met his wife and stuff like that, and they were the same ones that were over here, and, and I, they helped me out when I had to stay at their house to go to college, I had wrecked my car, and I was living in Bear Creek, and I had to go to, finish going to school, I had broken up with, with my son's mom, and so I was, stay at his house and at the, some bandmates house during the week to get to school so this happened i don't know for a semester or two i don't know probably a semester and uh so it's like yeah man, i owe these people stuff you know what i mean like fuck, they helped me out when shit was tough but at the same time like you know there was like some issues that we had too but then i didn't see this guy until way later in life like years and years later we had a fallout in Berry Creek and issues when we had kids. And it was just all, a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with it. But, or, you know, it has nothing to do with seeing him on the news. So, and the, the guy, like, had my mom, like, fucking babysit his kids and stuff, right? So there's some fucking real deep shit happening there. But, me and him personally had issues. You know what I mean? Like, I had issues with him, and he had issues. There was a power struggle between me and him. Like, he wanted to be, like, in my boss. Like, be, like, hey, own me and shit. And I'm like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? So, which, eventually, he ended up being that person to other people. But not to me. I'm like, no, nah, dude. Like, so I don't know if he used my mom or got my mom. I don't know. You know, he saw my mom as a mother figure. I don't know. Like, but that was her life. I didn't even hang out with her that that much at that time. So, um, because me and her had issues too. So there was a lot of stuff happening, and me and her had issues just because of life. But me and him had issues because it was a dominance thing. Like, who's like, I just, you know, like some people want to be some males when you're having out with other males, and they know. They want to test you, and when they test you, they don't win, and then they get mad about it. And that's what happened. And so he wanted to test me a few times, and I had to stay at his house. So I was like, "Fuck, dude!" Like, but at the same time, I was like, "Nah, dude, don't come at me like that." You know, like trying to be. <laughs> I'm like, "Fuck that, dude, no." And so he got mad about it or whatever. I don't know. So, so he wanted to take my art. He went to art show, and he fucking. And when we're taking the paintings back to, to my house in Bear Creek, the motherfucker kept some of my, my brother's art and my art. I'm like, hey, where's my painting? And stuff? He's like, oh, what? no, I'm keeping it. And I'm like, fuck that, dude. That's my painting. And he already did this when I was younger and shit, when I was first started Butte College. And I came home, and my paintings were off my fucking wall. And I'm like, where the fuck are my paintings? And he's like, hey, I came over. And like, I have them at my house and shit. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, he's like, they're my paintings now. I'm like fuck that dude and so we had that issue happen and so years later after all this other stuff happened he tried to do it again and stuff and i was like fuck that dude like because i got my paintings back but i let him have one just because i was you know i was trying to be a nice guy and shit. i was like okay you can. but i didn't let him own it i was like you can hang it on your wall and shit because it was flattering to that to thinking somebody wanted to, and he was uh a helper of my 
art world. He believed in me, and he was like, "Hey, man, I want, I believe, I love your art. You're fucking, I think you're great, dude. You're fucking." So you know what I mean? I got love for the dude and stuff, and I got love for Sarah for that same reason too. So they were. You know, when my fucking band, when my other bandmates fucking kicked me out of the band and shit, they were like, oh, fuck those guys, they don't know what, so they just, they, I know Don and fucking Sarah, they had love for me and shit, but at the same time, as years went on, he wanted to, I didn't stay the same, I ended up becoming more and more me, you know, being stronger and stronger and, you know, being more, less, being less tolerant of, of people taking my shit and not saying, hey, I took your, you know, letting people go get away with stuff. You know, like, which I guess they thought that's who I was, but that's not really who I am. Um, I only did that to, to let, to, because I care, because it wasn't that important to me at the time. But as time went on, any disrespect was like, like, only seen as hey man fucking, that can't happen and stuff so it was a the, um, you know it was just boundaries and stuff like nah dude that's not gonna happen same thing with women you know it's like fucking, someone that wants if a woman wants to act stupid with you treat you bad and then you kick them to the curb and stuff and you know that's boundaries so anyway so so we had issues and he got all mad and stuff and I accused him of still in having one of my paintings that he actually didn't have and he got all pissed off about that and so he said oh I took my all your paintings out and I burnt them and broke them and shit and I'm like you motherfucker dude like what the fuck so it was on and I was like fuck this guy dude so that was the last time and this was in Berry Creek this was in 2000 like fuck, who knows the early 2000s if that even Could have been 2000 who knows anyway it was early on um so then sarah and him lived next to each other up in Berry creek next to her mom's or whatever and they branded a house broke up with her already she just has my kid with her everywhere she goes and are fucking doing whatever they do and she like fucking you know what i mean bringing dudes around him and shit parties and i'm like fucking all pissed off over here right and i'm like fucking going to school trying to get my shit going and uh to fucking spend time with my kid and stuff and fucking so we're f i'm going fucking to bay area to pay off a car so my uncle david moves there has him uh him and his wife or girlfriend or i don't know what she was at the time and there's some issues all with that stuff too but i love my uncle david he taught us how to draw he was the one that helped us out with the creativity and um great guy if, you know he you know, had his own thing going on, but he was loved that guy. So him and his, I love my real aunt for like Lori. She fucking helped raise me too. My heart is to her. So seeing him with another woman was kind of fucked up. I never really uh, got used to her, or you know, like she was his wife. So that you know, that's what it was. And, nice lady you know i don't i didn't really know her that well but it was always a little weird to me but uh so they they're like hey you can pay for this car and you can and you can drive around we'll help you out and uh so i got another car and it was a nice car and it was her car and then they let me use and i was paying them off so i have to go to work and go to do all this stuff go to bear to the bay area and work over there and like Five thousand bucks I had to pay this money. I ended up losing the card. Fucking Sarah ended up getting it and making money off of it. Now that I think about it, I'm like, fuck, dude, she you should have gave me some money off of that car. What the hell was I thinking? So I lost two good cars and lost money from like cars that I paid thousands of dollars for, and I lost them like Rex and or not really Rex, but yeah, well that one was tickets or whatever or like not paying registration and not having money to. And then the other one was a wreck, and the only I fucking I, I didn't have anybody around me to help me out to that knew what was going on, so I gave up these cars that I probably could have fixed for a few hundred bucks, and it would have been great. And I paid five thousand dollars for each of these, so so you know, so it happened, you know, and I had 
you know, that $5,000 came from fucking blood, sweat, and tears, so it wasn't money that was given to me, other than student loans, but I, the first car I got from some student loans. Anyway, so, so that was history with these people, and him and Sarah were fighting with each other about some dog that he sold her and then he didn't give her the money and all this stuff and, and he was kind of that guy you know what I mean the bully kind of dude that would like say this and that and then poor these all of us grew up poor so I don't know but his his idea was be a bully to get what he wants and then, and I don't know if it worked for him or if it didn't I don't know and Sarah wasn't she was the opposite she was like eh. you know she complains and she was like talker and more of a manipulator kind of talker person you know emotionally manipulative kind of person but she wasn't like um, uh, uh, what do you call that like deal with the situation and whatever I don't know I don't really know I don't I don't I'll get into that later but for her for him and her they had issues my son was there and and then they had issues of, like them not getting along so the, so me and him had issues because of that and so but I was like I saw his point of view about her and I saw her point of view about him so I was just like I don't even want to get into it I don't know what's going on she has other dudes there so I don't know like you know what I mean like I'm dealing with both of these people in a way where I'm not happy with either of them I don't even talk to, I didn't even talk to Dawn for a while and her we just had we had to see each other because we had a kid and, that, and I wasn't happy with the way how she was doing raising him and having his home life so we had I had issues so that was and then the year year passed and whatever and then uh, that's when I had to Dawn ended up getting a place in paradise and then, I don't know how that happened. Well, somehow we made it. We ended up being okay with each other. I don't know how that happened. But I ended up uh, hanging out with him and his wife and stuff. And I knew them for a while already. And then, oh no, wait. Uh, that was before I got the car again. So I don't know where that, how that fits in, but. Pretty sure Bear Creek was first and then Paradise was second. And then, um, then we, somehow we had another fallout. There was some racial stuff. He's, that I, there was this black lady that was getting her hair pulled. She was on some talk show and and uh, and it hurt me, you know. I mean, I was like, fuck, you know, it just made me fucking sad. I was like, because she was like, you know, 40s and she was like crying about it. And, and he starts saying some stuff like, oh, fuck that, why are you crying about it? And I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, you know me for this long, you know fucking how I feel about racism and shit. Like, so we had issues. And I was like, after that, I was like, you know what, fuck. He's, after all this time, you still want to be like that? Like, you want to act like you're taking the side, you're not seeing it. You just still can't see race, you can't see it. And so we had issues there. And um, so we kind of, stopped hanging out and blah 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 I forget exactly what happened after that and then the next time I saw him was he came I was living in Chico we went to school already and did all this uh, stuff in paradise like I started uh, working with voice and all this stuff like that and then and I was living at another place in Cohasset or and then or and it was just I would have to write all this stuff down because it was a lot of moving around and then going to San Francisco and then blah, blah, blah. So I didn't see him till like, living in Chico for a couple of years, like in 2008. I started living there around 2007, 2008 with a girlfriend that I had been with. And and then we had it. We were, I was having, you know, all drama with her and dealing with all that stuff. New New life, new stuff going on still trying to raise my kid and then 
he comes into the picture somehow and wants to help out with farmer's market. I let him. He gets mad because I don't have to pay for some stuff and build it and all this all this stuff like which was kind of now that I think about it is kind of weird because I'm like fuck dude was he like he, I didn't get no weird vibes from him at the time about that stuff but he did come into my house and and my world had a weird time that maybe he did have something to do with that because people keep referencing like fucking Mario Brothers and all this stuff Luigi I don't know what that means but the dude wants to build this thing with pipes, right? Like with these fucking PVC pipes. Which, either he knew about something that happened or else he was part of it. Or it was just random. Or I don't know exactly what that means. But somehow that became part of my story too. Which I'm going to deal with in a moment. And later. But, uh... So we have Fallout because some farmer's market shit that I was like, fuck it. And so he left me with the bill. He fucking left. He was like, oh, this started to help you out with do the business and blah, blah, blah. And fucking, and he seems cool at the beginning, but then fucking few, two times, I think it was like two two times he went. And then he starts acting like he trying to be like, you know, overbearing and stuff. And I'm like, dude. And he was like, oh, you're being a, like some fucking bitchy artist and stuff. I'm like, fuck, I'm fucking drawing people for five hours or whatever in the hot sun. I'm like, if I don't help build this and be all sweaty and fucking all like you guys want to come up with a stupid idea to begin with and it doesn't even work and now you're mad at me for that like so anyway so that happened and so and he wanted me to pay for that and I was like dude I'm not paying and then I have to and then I'm stuck with doing everything and in a contract and all this stuff so now I'm like doing it all by myself and uh, other than my dad and helping out but uh but it worked out you know I did it and you know, it it worked out. So I don't know what he ended up going, getting opening a business called Amazon, which was a uh, farmer supply, like stuff that people chemicals and all this stuff that people buy for marijuana, their marijuana plants. This is before marijuana was even all everywhere. This was like so he was one of the first guys and shit, and it worked, I guess, for him. So um, I guess, and then I see him all the time later, years later didn't even know this talking to my old friend my old friend matt uh how and shit and they're like oh yeah he changed and fucking dave hyman was, oh yeah so like, he's all he hired us from the band and was like trying to be the guy you know bossy dude that telling everybody what to do or i don't know exactly but, but he, you know that's what he tried with me and i guess they were saying that he was changed you know and who knows what because some of the guys that i when i saw my mom there she wanted me to do a mural at the beginning and he was like and i shady dudes some fucking shady dudes and stuff I was like who the fuck are these guys and you know I'm not my mom's boss so she did what she wanted to do but I was just like what the fuck like I didn't want nothing to do with it because I don't know who I didn't me and him had issues to begin with and we never apologized we never worked it out so fucking I wasn't cool with it and I wasn't into the, the scene what was happening so I didn't like the, like the people that I saw I was like kind of like and you guys are kind of shady looking they were looking at me like you know what I mean like who the hell is this dude and I'm like so I wasn't in it I was like whatever dude like do what you do I don't care so I opted out of doing any art for him after that and I don't know if he got mad about it or whatever he wanted to be part of I, you know what I mean people want you to be part of their stuff but they want to own you kind of stuff and I, we, he kept wanting to do that and I'm like Nah, dude, we already had our fallout, and it's not going to happen like that. I'm not going to be fucking uh, your worker. Sorry. And so, so I don't see him till I see him on the news again. And fucking, and all this shit happened, you know. And I'm at fucking Sarah's house, which, lo and behold, I found out later all this shit's happening with fucking, she's throwing me fucking weird ass scenario of all this other shit that has to you know if there's all kinds of crazy shit that was happening there that I didn't even know about I don't know if they were videotaping me or fucking who was videotaping me or what kind of fucking games were being played and shit but now that I realize what happened like all the stuff starts coming up I'm like oh fuck 
Because then Seward fucking lived across the street. I didn't even put two and two together. Motherfucker lived across the street for all these years. His mom lived there when I started working for Voice. And I don't know. Just, I guess later on she moved there. Big old giant house. Her and Brian and their family. And they're like living like across the street from each other. I don't know if they fucking didn't like each other or what the hell was going on. But when I got there they didn't like each other. They were like playing these weird ass games with each other. Fucking neighbor wars. And I'm fucking, and I was in the middle, and I don't know what the, f so they were manipulating me and all this weird shit, right? And I don't know what's true or what's not true, but they put me in the middle of all this crazy shit. And I was already in the middle of all this crazy, through all these years, right? All this stuff I didn't even know about. And now, I'm, that's why I'm so pissed off, is because it's like, wow, dude, like, the fuck? And so, that's why I'm pissed off right now. Because it kept lasting, right? Now it's now it's 2019, and realizing it, I'm like, wow, dude! Like, I can't. It's it's mind blowing to even think about all this stuff. Like, so I'm digging myself out right now, and uh, so that happens, right? And so he calls me. I don't know. And then, so I meet him twice. I already talked about this, but then just, I meet him at. The, Bed Rock Park one time and there was this chick throwing a frisbee with the dog. It was this weird scenario. I was like, and I had all these women coming up to me to all to begin with for, for all these all these years since I was in Chico. Like crazy shit. All these beautiful women throwing themselves in the, the whole time. And uh, so I was like, whoa. And so this, so he's like all mad about it. He's telling me his life, what happened to him, and having all this money, trying to get rid of all this stuff, and trying to sell all these cars and all these guitars and and uh that they're after him and all this stuff which is legit you know like fuck you know shit I was, so i was like trying to be like bam you know like because i seen shit like that happen i seen people have a bunch of shit and everything taken away from them you know what i mean like there's no road in that world where you get to leave unscathed or your family gets to leave unscathed so I saw it firsthand, so I didn't need to see it again. I didn't have to live it again. So I was listening to him, and I was like, fuck, I could have told you that shit a long time ago. But the whole weed thing, everybody thought they, everybody can grow weed and everything's cool. Which I don't know, maybe it was, but he was saying the local authorities had it out for him, and they were after him and shit. So the second time, then I was like, okay, whatever. That was daytime, short, saying what up. Played guitar. I was there to play some music and give him an ear talk to or whatever because he was like ah oh, nobody's everybody's against me so I was just like what so that was like hung out for an hour or talked and, and then this, but he wasn't even into playing music he was dealing with and now that I think about it he probably fucking was there with the feds and shit on purpose trying to get me involved or whatever I don't know what that shit was about but if he was all super hot and he calling me and shit. And if I'm all fucking dealing with this shit that I never realized that they were after, they were fucking with me for, like, he might have been there just to fuck with me. Or it was a trade off. They fucked with him, got his, him in a situation, set him up, and then got him to turn on me or something or try to get me somewhere. I don't know. I don't really know because somehow he ends up being involved in the story later. I don't know how it all works out, but so that's and then so I see him again. He's like, oh yeah, you know, thank you. And so his dad's house, and his old house. He says, something, oh, I bought all this shit. He's still saying the same stuff. And he's like, oh, I want to buy this guitar, amp. And I'm like, yeah, you know, like no, I already, I didn't like the amp. And the guitar was. You know, I didn't have the money, first of all. I was still working at Butte, but I was trying to get shit going on my own. But I didn't have extra money to help him out. But he starts telling me, like, oh, this place is all bugged. And, you know, fucking, who knows, you know. And which is legit, because, fucking, that's how I felt in general, too. Like, that's how I've, you know, been feeling, like, dealing with all these fucking people around me. And it's not just the local, pe normal people around me. It's fucking all the jobs I've had. So it's, it's fucking big time shit. Like I'm involved in some fucking surveillance shit, and I don't know how I got, even got here, other than what they're telling me. 
but are you know trying to say that that's what it's about but it's not about that it has to be about something and anyway I already said it in the last video so so like one of my old good friends is on is this has happened to him and he's bringing me and telling me that again he went to to the fucking chick dance place which we went there one time and it was like he got a lap dance from some chicken and was all happy about it so he was a nerd you know so he fucking ended up like maybe he did end up liking that shit and paid for it the girl was like oh why are you here you know she knew why he was there but she was like why are you there because uh, you know I can get my own girls to give me lap dances for real and stuff and without paying them so but then that was snare dance I was never into this, to that those kind of places to begin with so that happened um And he was telling me that he, he was doing, but you know, fucking off and doing a bunch of drugs and all this stuff. And went off the wall, lost his family, lost his woman, lost all this stuff. And now lost all his money and is, was dealing with, um, you know, all bunch of stuff. I'm not even going to go to it because it's almost an hour. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm like, what? And then... So now, I have to say that no, I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. I have nothing to do with that. I don't know what the fuck happened with Don. I didn't see him one more time. He comes to my house in class eight years later. Um, I have to live with my brother, which now I realize that was also a setup where they were fucking falling and checking me out there too. So I'm like wondering if it was all me that I'm like all these people, but my own brother and his family got put into this place and you know set up with the free rent and all this stuff and and I got fucking cattled along couldn't get a fucking steady place to live without weird shit happening and they got me over there and then but fuck I didn't fucking really do anything but I guess some shit happened up there too I don't know if it's real it's fake or whatever so I'm just going through it because fuck that like I'm not involved with any of that shit and if anyone I know is involved or anybody I don't know anything I'm not involved I don't know if I can know what the fuck happened and I refuse to fucking let anybody think that I was or that's it you know what I mean like I got, sh I got shit to do in my life like I don't like if the authorities or whoever fucking powers that be want to put me there and keep me fucking in this fucking low level fucking working class fucking fucked up jobs fucking fuck that I work too hard I'm too great to fucking not take fucking the level where I of elite artist and creator like I'm, I want I need that money and stuff too like like I said, I'd rather die than fucking let let these people stop me from from doing this. So, and by the way, I will never kill myself. I don't believe in suicide. Do not believe in even hurting other people like that. Because I do believe that you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. I got too much to do. If I die, it has to do with the shit I'm talking about, and I'm. Thinking it's not gonna be my family, but they put my name out there. Fucking follow the money and stuff. It has to do with California world change, Illuminati, and I'm not Illuminati. Sorry, but fuck everyone else. I don't know what everyone else is into, but um, but uh, that's it. That's all I know. So this is two hours. I wish I could keep going, but um, I think two hours is enough for now. Later.